Hi everybody, good day to you. I'm uh, sitting out in the truck enjoying some AC because it's a little, a little warm today. And uh, I was opening the mail from last week and I've got a package here. It's from a company called AMJ Chemical in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, they sent me this product, it's for diesels. And it is a, uh, it's a fuel additive very clearly marked. It's called Occitane, and it's got this really awesome, like, bull tank logo. Yes, I know it's an ox. I don't know why I said bull. Well, I like that. It's very catchy. Uh, Streets 320 gallons of diesel is what they claim, and let's see. It improves the air release properties of diesel fuel. This results in improving fuel lubricity, eliminating fuel aeration, fuel cavitation, improves centane, and improves the energy density of the injected fuel. That's really cool if it actually does that. I'm curious to find out, and I'm going to find out because I just refilled and I've got 30 gallons of diesel back in my tank. Uh, moving on with the directions, it states to add, uh, fill the one ounce chamber up above, just like two stroke oil, fill the one ounce chamber and that'll treat 20 gallons of diesel. So with 30 gallons on board, I'm gonna need to fill the one ounce up and then do it again at the halfway mark. Now, I know I don't usually do product reviews. Uh, it's just kind of not my thing. Uh, however, I will do one this time uh, for two reasons. Number one, this is uh, kind of catchy and I like it. And uh, I always like to do cool things to my diesel. And number two, the company did not uh, ask me to and did not email me and ask me to do product reviews. Uh, I get a lot of those from like Amazon sellers and uh, offshore tool manufacturers and uh, you know, I just, I don't want to do that. But since a uh, company did not um, solicit this request, I'm gonna go ahead and make this video. And that right there is exactly why contrarians confuse people. We are not normal. Woo, and it is hot out here. Hot, 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 hot. All right, let's see what we get. Level surface, spillage. There is our one ounce right there, perfect. There you go right in there. And then one half. This stuff's kind of stinky, so you know it's good. All right, that is 30 gallons of diesel fuel treated. You know what? We really need to rinse that down because it's not a lot of liquid. There's a bunch of it probably just chilling on the filler neck. Good thing we have extra fuel. There we go. We'll rinse it all down very nice like. Done. I know that probably wasn't necessary, but I'm weird like that. Now, I uh, do understand that the results of this uh, experiment are uh, gonna have to, well, it's not a scientifically conducted experiment because we have no control or any additional variables. So this is basically just gonna be a, uh, a subjective evaluation of this product. My average fuel economy, which is unreliable at best because I tow sometimes, uh, sometimes I drive real fast, sometimes I'm towing something, uh, sometimes I sit around and I idle for a little while. So it, it, that affects the fuel economy numbers. I usually average between 13 and 15 miles per gallon. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this. Actually, I'll, I'll probably reset it after I'm done sitting here parked, but this is going to get reset. I'm gonna run two tanks of fuel through that, both of those treated to the maximum level of concentrate as per the instructions on the container. And then we will go back and just revisit a fuel economy. Uh, maybe it becomes more responsive. Maybe it doesn't do anything. Time will tell. So I will swing back around. We will touch base uh, on this subject and uh, uh, give me about a week or so to get through this first tank and then we'll do a refill and then we'll uh, we'll have one more follow up after a second tank. Okay, let's move that for sound reduction there. Now, uh, Steve, fella I just mentioned, he doesn't know it yet, but I'm making a video about this. I just got off the phone with Steve, and he is adamant that his product is, it does what he says it does. And what he says it does, and, and I picked up on this early in the conversation before he said it, and it, he, it must have come out as like a Freudian slip in his verbiage. Uh, this product, according to Steve, does not add fuel economy. It does not add horsepower. It does not improve emissions. But what it does do 
is restores those properties back to what the vehicle would have had when it was original, when it was new. Thus telling me it's uh, perhaps some kind of a, a cleaning agent, perhaps it's supposed to decarbonize my cylinders or piston rings or valves or intake runners. Um, and Steve said, and he was very, very confident that I would see some kind of a difference in 20 to 30 miles. Fortunately for me, I'm riding about 48 miles because that's how far my house is. So we're going to get a little bit of city driving, a little bit of highway driving, and then some two lane country road driving where I get to go faster than I was on the highway. So let's get this party started and uh, we're going to see if subjectively I feel a difference in this vehicle's performance. This is kind of fun. I'm a little excited. Mike, do you got any additive for my air conditioner? It's like a billion, kajillion degrees outside. It's having a hard time making cold in my truck. Look at that. Look at that. That's that 72 degrees. That's not even okay. Well, that was, that was pretty good. It actually pulled really good. I I kind of had to get out of it some. I didn't expect it, and, and I'm I'm not playing this up, guys. I, I really did not expect to uh, to have that happen. Uh, again, I'm I'm trying to be objective during this subjective experiment. We're gonna do that a couple more times, and I can't wait till I get off the interstate. We're gonna do some wide open throttle action. I want to see what this thing does. But before we do that, I need to stop before I run into that car up there. Objects in phone are closer than they appear, like a lot. Now, please keep in mind that I am trying to be aware of the placebo effect, where I, I believe that this thing performs better because I think it should. Uh, for example, your car drives better after you get it detailed. It doesn't actually drive any better, whether it's full of trash or covered in dirt or if it's spotless, clean, showroom quality, it will still operate the same. You just think it operates better. That's the placebo effect. There's probably another name for the phenomenon, but I, I chose to call it the placebo effect. I, I could be completely wrong. And I am aware of what a placebo is, but uh, just in case I'm gravely mistaken on uh, the name of that phenomenon, don't. Don't shame me. Beginning on ramp merging procedure now. Oh, well, that shouldn't be too hard. We're not going anywhere. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go ahead and back it down. I'm not in any hurry. truck man will let me in. Thanks, tow truck man. We'll give him the four-way flashers a thank you. It's proper road communication. Another form of truck communication is if somebody has their turn signal indicated that they would like to merge over and you would like to let them in, all you gotta do is flick your lights on if they're off or flick them off couple seconds and back on and that momentary change of state in the headlights will indicate to the driver who's trying to merge that you're allowing them to merge so again you flick them on a couple seconds flick them off he should have seen that having seen that he'll move on over and everybody plays nicely courtesy it's an incredible thing when everybody's just trying to be in the same spot at the same time courtesy I would like the courtesy of more cold air. I can tell it's hot out there. The truck's telling me so because my fan is locked in and it sounds like a turbine engine driving down the road. I like it. Uh-oh, I see what's going on. There is broken or wrecked cars on that side of the road. I see some, uh, some flashy fashion lights up there. Right around here somewhere. Oh, I see the problem. I think the 
cars were touching at high speed. Yeah, it looks like a wrecked Camaro. There's some sports car or whatever over there. Is it a Dodge? It looks like Lightning McQueen from this angle. Oh, wow, they broke a bunch of stuff. Oh, dang, that one's on its side. That They got the whole highway shut down. Oh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not cool. Hope everybody's okay. That's, uh, that could have been nasty. All steam. later and these guys are still parked here. That's pretty bad. This goes on and on, I bet. You know what? That's where I usually get off. We're just going to keep on riding. I want to see how far, how many miles this backup went. Oh yeah, we're still going. Oh look, traffic is merging. I have the opportunity to give way. Although I'm not required to, courtesy. Oh look, I'm clear of the potential hazard, but I don't feel like driving 150. I'm gonna go ahead and merge back into the right lane, courtesy. This traffic jam is still going miles, just miles. All right, we just came out of that little divided tree median and uh, we are no longer experiencing a heavy traffic jam. Because that accident back there just happened. They don't even have uh, tow trucks on the scene to flip that car back over. So this is gonna be backed up for miles. And In half a mile, take the exit toward University Parkway. Oh, no, Google or Siri or whichever robot servant that is, you're interrupting me and that was very rude. Stupid robot servants. All right, guys, my skepticism is starting to uh, wear off a little bit. I'm uh, doing about 70 on the interstate. I am not drafting a larger vehicle, meaning I'm pushing out all of my own air out of the way. And I'm getting 14.4 to the gallon. And uh, included in that 14.4 miles per gallon was about 10 minutes of idle time and two full throttle pulls. And that's in no less than, oh, what, five, six miles maybe? So, that being said, I'm already noticing an increase in fuel economy because the average that I reset was 13.9. And I should have seen a decrease in economy from just this past drive after my last reset that you saw. So I'm, I, I'm starting to drop my guard a little bit on this product. This thing may actually be doing something that uh, like the label says it's supposed to. It's, oh, it just, fuel economy just fell. Look what happened. Oh, it, this product's terrible. But I also accelerated. Now, I think this is actually uh, doing a pretty good job here. I, we'll see. We'll see. We're going to finish up this, uh, this first test drive. And like I said earlier, we'll finish out this first tank. And uh, I will, uh, I'll get some final thoughts on the subject afterwards. All right, we're gonna step it up to uh, about 80. Get a quick second here, let her stretch her legs a little bit. Clear to merge, courtesy. Whoa, 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 brake check. What are we doing? Let's all just slow it down. This is a scary time for me. You start to try to back it down because you see something going on and everybody else is just flying past you at 90 miles an hour. Look at that, 14.9 miles per gallon, and I was rolling about 80. That was a good two or three minutes up there at that speed, so I actually got more fuel economy out of it. Confused. This is no. Seriously, no. If if this if this stuff is doing what I'm believing that it's doing, then Steve. You're gonna get Clintoned, my man. You can't make something like this. If this stuff catches on, you're gonna have to go into hiding. Yeah, now look, 15.2. Now, this isn't a fuel treatment. This is like, it's like a liquid compound filled with nanobots and they're going in here and 
messing with my, my ECM. That's what's going on here. Come on to you. But you know what I'm not on? My exit ramp that's about to show up. Merging, indicating. Hey, look at this. Yeah, here we go. Come on over and just take that spot that I wanted. Nope. I have more torque than you. I hate that. You put on your signal. You need to move over, and the guy back behind you, they're going to go ahead and speed up and then not let you get over. Oh, more police. It's a busy day out here. Wow. Ah, that's just state patrols pulling somebody over. You got caught being stupid. Merging. Thank you, other car that's not speeding up. Oh, also, let it be known, uh, I did mention that I filled up my uh, primary tank right here this morning. What I didn't mention is my auxiliary tank in the back of this truck has about 65 gallons in it uh, as of right now. So I do have that extra weight of that tank and uh, was it, seven pounds a gallon on 67 pounds. Uh, carry the four, 49 minus the square root of Yeah, so we'll call that what, 420, 430, 40, 50 pounds of actual fuel plus the 200 for the tank. So we're riding between 600 and 650 pounds extra from what the truck would normally carry. Except that is what it normally carries now because 2022. Here's a good place to actually do a decent wide open throttle pull. We're still hanging out around the 15 mile per gallon mark. That's our total trip so far. Let's roll. All right, half throttle and rolling into it. It's wide open. Yeah, we made a little bit of smoke. Feels pretty good. Nice. All right. I don't know if that was putting me in the seat difference and that kind of felt normal. Again, this is all subjective. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was it was awesome. I mean, it's wide open throttle on a turbo diesel. Well, this little Dodge Neon up there is going to ruin the experiment because uh, sooner or later, I'm gonna be on that side of them. We're not gonna drive down this road at 45 miles per hour. This is a 65 mile per hour zone. Now you translate that into Florida and you end up with 85. Fast forwarding one weekend later. Getting a little wild out here. That was fast. Okay, earlier you guys saw in this video, I, uh, I got that fuel economy after uh, putting this additive stuff in here. Uh, it is now the next week. It's been like three days. I went home, parked the truck, drove back to work this morning, and uh, I'm leaving right now. I just reset the monitor. Now, when I got home on Friday, my meter right here said about 15.1 MPG, which I thought that was kind of phenomenal considering my norm is around 13.9, something like that. Uh, I sat in my driveway and idled for about 15 minutes. I was on the phone. Uh, that brought it down to 14.8. And then I drove it to work this morning and being a Monday, uh, it was kind of a full lead foot action. So that brought it down, I think it was like 14.1 when I got to work this morning. And uh, silly me, I started the recording as I was pushing the reset button and I didn't actually catch it. So um, uh, hence the restart. So I just, I zeroed it out one more time. We're gonna do the same normal drive home that I always do. I'm gonna try to ignore it again to be objective. And we're gonna see if we can uh, get some kind of uh, economy improvement out of it with um, another run of the same experiment. However, even this experiment slightly flawed. It's a little cooler today. We're hanging out at what, 81 degrees. It's been raining a lot. So humidity's up, temperature's down. That's going to have an effect on air density, which could very well have an effect on fuel economy. You know, and traffic's a little light too. I usually don't get to coast to this red light. So that's also going to have a, an effect on uh, my metered miles per gallon. Coasting, coasting, coasting. All right, we're up to 10 miles a gallon. So after just a couple blocks, we've already ticked up to 11.6, 11.7, something like that. 
maybe this uh, fuel economy will climb after all. Front row. Yeah, let's all merge like normal people here. Yeah, I made a video the other day, and uh, I was I was reading some of the comments on it today, and uh, I made mention. Um, what was I doing? I made mention, of, I, I wanted to check to see if this car was stalling in reverse. So I made mention uh, at a red light that I was gonna go ahead and throw it in reverse a couple of times. Uh, but then all of a sudden the traffic in front of me started to coast through the light. I hope I get to catch this red light. I throw it in reverse and scare this Mustang behind us. Let's see if I got a minute to do this. I don't know. Nah, now nah, we're going. I'm not gonna be that guy. That would be rude. Putting my own personal agenda before the convenience of others. I'm not gonna hold up traffic, and I made the comment that I am not gonna put my own personal agenda in front of other people's convenience. Uh, I don't think I was just talking about courtesy or something like that, you know, normal rambling. And some guy showed up in comment land and started ripping me a new one about how uh, holding a phone or a camera is putting my own personal agenda before other people's convenience because in some states it's against the law to record in your car, I guess, if you're not using a dash cam. Um, and it really didn't make much sense to me, but I was just like, I, I couldn't tell if the guy was like trolling or just babbling on something nonsensical. I mean, what does it matter if I hold the little square up in the air and, and then talk to it while I'm doing something uh, versus changing my radio station or uh, turning around yelling at my kids or uh, looking for a map address on the on the Google machine. I, I mean, there's a, like a hundred billion things I could be doing uh, by holding an object or a phone, so I don't really see how holding this thing up in the air. I mean, well, I just, look at it. it's, it's just a phone. It's like a little brick and I'm not looking at it. I'm looking through it so I can see where I'm going. I mean, it's really enhanced because, if, you know, the, the ultra high definition screen is, is much more defined and brilliant than like actual real life. So I, I don't see why looking at the phone should really be a problem. But hey, can't please everybody, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm talking to myself. So anyway, back to the business at hand, we've achieved 13 and a half miles per gallon. That's that's pretty normal. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens by the end of our trip. So here's the deal. I, I told myself I would be objective about this uh, fuel economy and performance thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn that menu off and not look at it. And in doing so, maybe I can get it out of my mind, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And it, because having that there may actually be affecting the way that I'm driving. So I'm just gonna turn that off, ignore it, and then uh, see if we get some real life results out of the situation or if it's kind of just on in my head. Oh, cool, diesel's 557 a gallon. Not buying fuel today. And that, my friends, is the reason that I bought that 90 gallon auxiliary tank that's in the back of the truck because if I see fuel go down and dip some, then I could buy a whole bunch of it. That way, when I need fuel later and the price is up higher, I'm actually burning fuel that was a lower cost than, uh, than what it is currently. So I try to use it as like a buffer. It won't really matter because in a couple months when we're hanging out at $10 a freaking gallon, uh, I don't think that uh, a little bit of extra change is going to matter because that's just going to bring everybody to a screeching halt like this guy right here. He can't operate a 10 bucks a gallon diesel. This guy right here. Nope, he's out of business. See that yellow truck back there? 10 bucks a gallon diesel? That thing's getting parked. I tell you what though, I'm gonna trade in my or whatever car and I'm gonna go out and buy a $90,000 Tesla because I don't have to buy gasoline anymore. It just goes pew. Oh no, you guys, I'm totally terrible at making videos this week. So I didn't record the end of this while I was driving home because I didn't want you guys to know where I lived. But um, I didn't realize it at the time. So uh, we're going out uh, to the truck we're gonna see what the fuel economy was because if you recall, I had turned off the uh, menu setting and uh, I don't know what I was getting when I arrived. Let's okay, see we got let's here. see what we got here. It's really dark. It's my shed. 
It's a new shed. Powering on. 14.8. Okay. It, I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm a little surprised like I was uh, earlier yesterday when I, Friday, this Friday when I shot the, the first part of this video. Um, I'm, I'm a little impressed, seriously. It, it doesn't usually get economy this good. Uh, and I know the stuff's not supposed to uh, actually provide a fuel economy improvement or a horsepower improvement or an emissions improvement. According to the bottle and according to Mike, it's only supposed to uh, restore uh, your your vehicle's uh, potential uh, back to what it was like when it was new. And, I, and I, I'm not really sure you know, how to explain that. And I'm sure perhaps in the future uh, uh, we can get some more information on this product and see, you know, kind of what it is and what it's made of and how it works. But for the time being, I'm just gonna continue to run this experiment and see how this thing goes. I really, really wanna know what it is. Powering down. Beam. All right guys, it's late. I'm gonna finish this up and go to bed. So as always, I'd like to thank you for watching. And don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later.